Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, we are praying. We are praying in the midst of hopelessness and depression. And the perfect psalm for this is Psalm 143. According to my Life Application Bible by Tyndale, it says our prayers should fit into what we know is consistent with God's character and plans. David's prayer was to be taught to do God's will, not his own. A prayer for guidance is self-centered if it doesn't recognize God's power to redirect our lives. Do you want God to redirect your life? Yes or no? Do you want God's power in your life? Asking God to restructure our priorities awakens our minds and stirs our wills. So when you are asking the Lord in your prayer time to teach you to do his will, you got to be willing to not be that one that's self-centered you got to be willing to allow the Lord to redirect your life. The problem is, is that the Satanists, the Luciferian, some of these other ones who believe themselves to be their own gods. They are either allowing the enemy of darkness to redirect their lives or themselves or those who are serving. Satan. And of course, people who serve Satan are not going to always come out and let you know that that's what they're doing. They're not going to let you know some of these folks that's into all sorts of witchcraft that where they got their information was from deceased relatives or deceased things or uh, some type of entities on the other side that are demonic in nature. So even though some people will say, well, I don't really get into God and I'm not into this and that they're into something. It's just it's covertly pushed into your life and it has a nice little bow on it. It might be something to eat, might be something to watch on TV, but your mind is being influenced in some way. If I'm allowing the Lord to lead my life, if I'm allowing the Lord's power to be made manifested within me and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't have those things like hopelessness and depression and sadness and suicidal ideations and all of that affecting my being. And if some folks are sick and tired of feeling this way, then you have come to the right message. David was losing hope. Caught in paralyzing fear and deep depression in Psalm 143. At times we feel caught in deepening depression and we are unable to pull ourselves out. At those times we can come to the Lord and like David express our true feelings. Sometimes people can encourage your depression, believe it or not, because they don't allow you to express your true feelings. Can I just be honest with you that at times I feel like A, B and C. Oh, OK, honey, <laughs> I don't need you to be wearing me out with all of your negativity. So you don't feel like you can express your true feelings. You see, there are times where we do have to listen to those individuals who are going through much. And sometimes people who have experienced a long stretch of days where, oh, I don't have any problems. They also become quite prideful. And so what goes up comes down. And now they want somebody to listen to them when they were not interested in listening to others when they were down and out. So in some ways, this hopelessness and depression shows up and it can turn into a curse for some people because of the way they treated others. And only you know how you treated others when you were feeling good, when everything was great and everything was nice. And even if you do recognize that you're going through as a result of reaping and sowing season, then all you have to do is just simply confess your sin and repent. And the Lord will 
slowly but surely take away these negative things that you're going through. So we're going to the Lord like David and we're expressing our true feelings. Then what happens is God is going to help us as we remember his works. But if I'm not reading my Bible, then I don't remember or I don't recall because I never had anything in my spirit as far as what it is that God does for people. So for some people, that's what they need to do is get back to reading as well as listening to material about what it is that God does for people. Okay, the goodness of God, the holiness of God. The other thing that you do is you're going to pray. You're going to pray and you're going to trust that he's going to do those very things that you prayed about. And even if he doesn't, it's for your own good, because maybe something that you asked him to do would cause you to go back into a depression again. But you have to make a decision to do his will and whatever his will is, it might come through a like minded believer who says to you, OK, I see in the spirit that you're going to need to do A, B, and C. I know as much as you don't like what I'm about to say, but, and then they'll fill in a blank for you. You may even have this conversation with yourself. Lord, I know why I'm in depression right now. I know why I feel hopeless because of what I was saying, what I was doing lately. And it could have been something that was very ungodly, unrighteous. And so what are you going to have to do in order to stop experiencing this depression and this hopelessness? You're going to have to make some changes. So let's get into Psalm 143. I'm reading out of the Life Application Bible by Tyndale. Oh, Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy and your faithfulness and righteousness. Come to my relief. Sometimes the relief is just not enough from a disaster relief company, right? From a nonprofit group. Thank you for this material wealth. Thank you for these material things. But I need something that's going to get me through these dark days. Some folks go and they get their prescription meds. And they do help for a time. But then there's still something that's going on. Or maybe there's a side effect and now they got to change medicines. And then here comes another problem, you see. And one still feels depressed. One still feels hopeless. What do I do? Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. Some folks looking for their relief in people, places and things that let them down. Lord Jesus, you know that this isn't working. You know that these people aren't treating me right. You know I'm not getting the necessary help that I need. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy and your faithfulness and righteousness. Come to my relief. Do not bring your servant into judgment. For no one living is righteous before you. That's powerful right there. Why do I have to go through judgment? Jesus, there's no one, no one on this planet that's righteous. Oh, I can hear somebody saying something like that right now. Why do I have to go through like this? Struggling, fussing, fighting, not knowing where I'm going to get the next money to pay for this, that, and the other. Jesus, I need your help. Please, Lord Jesus, there's no one righteous. The enemy pursues me. Some folks stalking folk, lying on folk, always got an attitude, always coming up with some type of problem for somebody. This enemy pursues me. He crushes me to the ground. Have you ever fell out on the floor tripping over something because you were just so disappointed, so angry about something? Have you ever fell down on the ground because your legs just couldn't stand any longer because of all of the mess somebody put you through? Have you ever fell on the ground and just lie prostrate before the Lord because there was nothing else that you could do? I've done it all, Lord, and nothing seems to be working. The enemy pursues me. He crushes me to the ground. How about physical abuse, right? Some of us who've been there, done it, seen the movie. Oh, you end up on the floor. Jesus, Jesus, help. 
The enemy pursues me. He crushes me to the ground. He makes me dwell in darkness. Some folks, oh no, they didn't go through some hitting and shoving and kicking and spitting and pushing. But what they did go through was to be locked in a closet somewhere or put in a basement somewhere or put in some type of just atmosphere that was dark. Oh, and they tried to find their way out. The enemy, the enemy makes me dwell in darkness like those long dead. Some folks go through some type of ritual where it involves a coffin, scared out of their minds. And then, and then they say, I can't take this any longer. Lord, this isn't what I want. I don't know what what I got myself mixed up into. These people is crazy. These people's dark. These people's disturbing. Lord Jesus, I mean, they had me on this drug when I went through. Or they did this, that, and the other to me. And I didn't even give them permission. Or I was sitting up there drinking and I didn't think it was going to turn into something like this. Jesus. Woo, Lord Jesus. So my spirit grows faint within me. My heart within me is dismayed. I remember the days of long ago. I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. I spread out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Answer me quickly, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me or I will be like those who go down to the pit. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. And for a lot of people, it's at nighttime when all of this stuff hits them. And that's why in this particular scripture, let the morning, right? I suffered all through the night. I struggle with this thing. I grapple with this thing. I'm so tired this morning, right? Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love. For I've put my trust in you. You see, I put my trust in the Lord. I said, I put my trust in the Lord concerning my kids. I put my trust in the Lord concerning the future. I put my trust in the Lord concerning my internet real estate. Okay. I put my trust in the Lord concerning all things because I'm tired. That's what I heard myself say in the spiritual realm. Going through much. Saints was praying for me and everything else. I'm tired. And the Lord. The Lord, he moved upon my spirit and he delivered me up out of that funky state of mind that I was in where you just feel burnt out, where the days are going by so quickly, where you don't even get a chance to think about anything. You just going through, just going through your day. You don't even remember the last thing you did because the day is going by so fast and it was speeding up. It just seemed like every day that was passing was speeding up and every day I was feeling more and more tired. And the Lord was saying that you're taking on too much in your mind. It wasn't so much my physical hands doing things, but it was my mind. And I can tell you, you can go crazy if you don't allow your mind a break. You got to allow the Lord to just work on you sometimes in that perfect peace. You see. I don't need to have emotion for every itty bitty thing. I don't need to be concerned about what everybody else is doing on a regular basis because the Lord, he is the one that's going to download the message that I need to speak. And then he's also the one that's going to upload what it is that I need to sustain me. So I trust in him. Too much trust in men and women, I don't care what their titles are in your life, will also drive you mad. Because sometimes people are just not going to do what you want them to do when you want them to do it. Sometimes things are not going to go as planned. People make mistakes, a lot of them, especially when they're not walking in the way that they're supposed to be walking. They're not reading instruction books. They're not following plans. They're doing things in their own strength. And that will upset you Woo. And so if you don't want to be upset all the time, don't be trusting in these men and women. Trust in what you can do according to the will of the Lord. Go to the Lord. Ask him what you're supposed to say, what you're supposed to do, where you're supposed to go so that you don't get let down so much. You see. I'm talking to somebody. Put your trust in God. Show me the way I should go. For to you, I lift up my soul. 
Rescue me from my enemies, O Lord. Somebody got some enemies, right? For I hide myself in you. You hide yourself in the one true God when you got enemies. See, they want to know where to find me. I'm praying. I'm praying in my closet. You see. Enemy don't want to mess with you when you praying. Enemy comes over wanting to tell you this, that, and the other. And it's not necessarily positive. Okay, and what you want me to do? <laughs> because uh, I don't have too much. I mean, you're going to have to go ask somebody else. Oh, the enemy just got rejected. Now he wants to pay you back or she wants to go after you. Because I don't take to rejection very well. Oh, well. See, the enemy can get the upper hand on some people because they're scared. They're scared of bullies, just like they were back on the playground back in the day. They're scared of bullies. They don't see that in themselves. But today we're going to bring that out. Some people feel hopeless and depressed because the bully been kicking them. Sometimes the bully doesn't kick. Sometimes the bully just fusses. Other times the bully is provoking, provoking you to be that one that does something so that they can say that they're the victim. Sometimes the bully doesn't even say anything, but the ignoring and the silent treatment and whenever you talk and they're not responding, that's evil. And it's designed to drive you mad. And if you are driven mad, then of course you're going to make bad decisions. And then if you do get some of your senses back, you just might end up being depressed and you might feel hopeless because this is all I got or this is all I have in my life right now. Bullies, enemies, minions, children of darkness, they take pride in kicking people down verbally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. They take pride in that because they feel hopeless. You see what I'm saying? They have feelings of despair. Misery loves company. I don't like looking at you smiling. I don't like looking at you feeling good and having the energy to do all these great things. So here's what I'm going to do. That jealous, spiteful, rude, arrogant, selfish individual does. I'm just going to shut you out. I'm just not going to talk to you. How does one who might be guilty of such things, how does he or she stop doing this negative stuff that's keeping their hopelessness and, and uh, depression going? You go to the Lord with whatever it is that's on your heart and you ask the Lord for forgiveness for mistreating other people. I didn't know that's what I was doing when I was picking up the phone and I was saying all these negative things to so-and-so. I didn't know I was keeping their hopeless feelings going in addition to my own. I didn't know that acting so mean toward people was as a result of some unresolved issues that I had that was keeping my depression going. Oh, you got to connect the dots. Who or what is it that is keeping you from living your best life right now. Show me the way I should go. For to you I lift up my soul. Rescue me from my enemies, O Lord. For I hide myself in you. Teach me to do your will. For you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. I want to be on level ground. I don't want to be on bumpy ground. I don't want to be on ground that's got potholes. I don't want to be on ground that got sinking holes all around it. I don't want to be on shaky ground. 
Lord said, okay, well then come and follow me. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to do? Well, I'm willing to move. Okay, good. We got to start. I'm willing to let go of some people. Somebody else says, okay, good. I'm willing to let go of this one medicine because I know it's this medicine that's keeping me like this. Okay, well then go to the doctor and find out what other medicine you can take. Okay, what about you? Well, I'm thinking that in order to be in your perfect will, I think maybe I need to study your word more. Okay, what about you? Well, I know that I need to get around the like-minded because it's been a long time since I went to church. But there's no church around me. But is there a hotel? Yes, there is. Do you know of a church that meets there? Oh, I didn't think about that. What about your neighbors? Oh, hmm. You can go on a website like next door and find out if they're having some church services in their homes. And even if they're not, you can set one up. Well, I'm not a minister. No, but you know how to read out the Bible. And that's all that it takes. Pray. The Lord give you a scripture and you start reading it every time you meet with those people. And everybody can talk about that scripture. Give them something to eat and go home. Come on. Somebody is going to get up out of hopelessness and despair. I don't have any money. You got a solution for that? Yeah. It's called make sure that you go on the Internet and get the necessary resources to help you get some money. Find out what kind of monetary assistance is in your state. Find out what kind of uh, situation that you're in that you might possibly be able to collect a check for a while. Okay. Do some extra things. Maybe you do have a job, but maybe you need to get another job. Maybe you need to have different income streams because the ones that you're you're using right now are outdated and they're just not working as effectively as they once did. Oh, there's things that one can do if he or she is determined to feel better about his or herself. But you can't do it without the one true God if you're looking for that long lasting type of peace. Right. Oh, people get some temporal peace. Temporal peace from drinking and drug use. They get some temporal peace from taking a stroll or driving somewhere. They get temporal peace from sitting on the phone talking to somebody. Or temporal peace from looking at some old videos or what have you. But I'm not interested in temporal peace. I'm not interested in some stuff that's just going to make me feel good for about 5, 10, 15, 20 plus minutes. And then it's back to the same old, same old. Come on. Somebody said, I'm not interested in that sort of thing any longer. I want to be able to get up out of this thing and be able to do what I'm supposed to do and you can do it you just got to make up in your mind that today is the day I'm not going to make excuses any longer I know what I'm supposed to be doing it's just that I don't feel like doing it and that's where I get into that message about the uh, feel good feel like type of Christian only want to do things that make them feel good. Only want to do things that they feel like doing. And feelings are going to do nothing but keep some people from heaven. Because God wants you to be obedient. And I've said this in other audio. And I'm saying it again. God wants you to be obedient to his will. I know it's tough sometimes. I know it's hard. I know that the world told you that Christianity is this, that, and the other. I'm not talking about a religion. I'm talking about sending people back to their creator. I'm talking about accepting Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and allowing that Holy Spirit that you receive after you accepted him to guide you up out of the darkness. Oh, that's right. Somebody forgot that they got the authority given to them through Christ Jesus via our Holy Spirit to get up out. I can get up out of this hopelessness. That's right. I forgot who I am. I'm more than a conqueror. Get your vision back. Some people will say, that's right, I come from a long line of family members that are strong. What's wrong with me? Why am I so weak? No, uh -uh, I'm tired of being called that. Some people are even called that. You're the weak one. You don't know what you're doing. All of that. And then, and then on top of that, their voices, these relatives and friends, their negative voices show up in your head when you feel down and out. And then you got to fight through that thing. Get that positive music in your ear. Get those positive affirmations going. Get some postings up that are positive and enlightening, enlight, uh, lightning, and take some of that other foolishness down. Because some people got some negative looking ugly things in their household that will also keep you feeling uh, hopeless. And some people watch movies that keep them feeling bad. And then others, they will listen to music that trigger all sorts of negative thoughts. 
Oh, yes. Some people say, oh, it's harmless. No, it's not harmless. It's harmful. And then if I keep talking to that negative neighbor or that negative uh, relative, that'll keep you feeling depressed, too. You don't have to ever tell them, you know what, talking to you, that's part of the reason why I have problems, because they're going to say, don't you blame me. But we know the truth. Some of these people, their hopelessness and their depression starts messing around with us. And then the next thing you know, we feel in some kind of way. No, uh, uh-uh. I don't want to feel like that. So I rebuke the devil in Jesus mighty name. I put the blood covering of Jesus on me. I'm sitting up there with some anointed oil. I'm putting it on my forehead, on my heart, on my hands even. That way when I shake some people's hands, (laughs) Lord Jesus, I'm asking that the Lord's anointing fall upon them and to drive Satan out. In Jesus' name, and send him back into the abyss along with his his minions. And somebody needs to say that right now. I rebuke you, Satan. I rebuke you, Satan, in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, with me just saying it right now, I feel even more lighter. <laughs> even more lighter than I did when I first started this message. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life in your righteousness. Bring me out of trouble. And your unfailing love silence my enemies. See? Enemies run in their mouths. Destroy all my foes. Some people say, well, wait a minute. Other oh, certain people. Just destroy all my foes. Don't get sentimental here. When you know people are negative and treating you wrong and all of that, don't get sentimental. In your unfailing love, silence my enemies. Destroy all my foes, for I'm your servant. See, you say that kind of prayer when you sick and tired of being sick and tired. When you tired of being abused by somebody, you say that type of prayer. And I know those type of prayers, they work. I know some praying women back in the day, woo, destroy. Don't necessarily mean in the sense that they're destroyed like dead, but destroyed in terms of all of the foolishness that they came up with. Their plans are destroyed. Oh, I got plans for this one. No, you don't. <laughs> Cause I'm not around any longer. Hey, <laughs> I'm not your scapegoat any longer. Hey, you see, destroy, destroy my foes. Oh, you thought I was your income source. Not any longer. Hey, <laughs> that's been cut off. You see, destroy don't always mean about somebody dying. And even if you do pray that sort of prayer and a person dies, look, you didn't have no power over that. They was already on God's bad side. So that's why I say some things people just want to go that weak route with the Lord. I'm not the one I go all the way with the Lord. I'm about giving people the power through the scriptures to be able to stand up against the enemy. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers and darkness of this world. You've got to have spiritual armor in these tough times. So that is it. May the Lord be with you in Jesus mighty name. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. And if you haven't subscribed, we do welcome new subscribers. And if you would like to give a donation, you are welcome to do so. And, of course, to God be the glory, right? Because if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be able to put together messages like this. So, blessings. Blessings to you as well as those that you love. And thank you once again, Lord, for another inspiring message.